going on? Tonight I'm going to talk about Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On album. This was his first all new album, non soundtrack, because he did Trouble Man back in 72. But it was his first regular album after the What's Going On classic. And Let's Get It On took him into a different element. But it was a very moving piece of work. And it's hard to believe this album is 45 years old. This classic right here was with the red hat and everything. And he caught on what he was doing. It was, it was something else. Um, the title track was so bluesy, so cutting. Uh, it was one of those cuts that you just won't soon forget. It left a lasting impression. Mind-blowing song. One of them songs that, you know, it's timeless. Incredible song. He did it with Ed Townsend. Incredible song. Um, Deep, profound, If I Should Die Tonight. One of them songs that it's like he precursed Tupac's most of his existence with that song because that was such a, those, those vocal harmonies and those chords and the way he did multi-tracking, mind-blowing. He was like one of the first artists to pull it off and make it into his own. Come get to this sensual, deep, powerful, incredible song. Um, one of them songs that you 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 remember where you were, just left a lasting impression. It was very strong. Distant lover. When you've been there, you know exactly what the song's about, and it's so powerful, both the live and the studio version. But he was really wailing on that song. Really left a uh, a lasting impression. You know, one of those kind of songs that uh, you know it, it lingers with you. It was definitely one of them songs and his tones and his feelings. So incredible song there. Um, one of them songs that would be suggestive at that time raise eyebrows today. You know, but he still did it in a sensuous way. You should love the ball up. I was one of them. Sensual songs, love the melody, the moan, the mel the melodicness of it. He always had like a jazz blues, so much harmony and feeling with that gospel. He he beat you in so many ways. He was very distinctive, like the Marvin Gaye, just one of those euphoric type of artists that when you hear these songs in the moment, you they convey such a message. It's like he's on his plane. Um, you know, just to keep you satisfied, sounds one way, and then in his world, it means another, because it's also like almost like a precursor to the Hear My Dear album, which it was his dedicated to his ex-wife, Ann Gordy, when he settled, on Gordy Gay, when he settled out of court. So sometimes he's like sending messages, and he was in between uh, with Kimmy get involved with Jan Gay. He's just like he... He had this evolving door of different things that were going on, but he threw his life out there. That's what made Marvin Gaye so great because his vulnerability and his escapism through his music and his actions um, left a lasting impression, one of those things. And I did happen to get the bonus double disc, which came out, and there were a lot of different cuts that he did. Uh, some of the live cuts, he did a couple of things with Hal Davis and Freddie Perrin and the Mitzel. Did with the Mitchell brother, and he also did some with Willie Hutt. So you get, you know, outtakes and variations. But this is a great project. It's one of his best instrumental, tone, feel, capture his aura as an artist. He's peaking his prime, if you will. And it's hard to believe this album is 45 years old, but it still sounds uh, mind blowing to this day. Um, that's what Marvin Gaye's music was, is what he represented. And this is one of the best albums uh, I've ever heard. Uh, let's get it on album. Very deep, very preferred, per personal. And so that's my take on that. And feel free to leave comments. Hit that subscribe button. I'm out. Peace.